Xbox 360 store is shutting down in July, and you know what that means. Yep, physical game prices are going through the roof. Is there relief in sight? Well, let's take a look. Welcome to Retronomics, the series that follows price trends in video games, and today we're taking a look at the Xbox 360. Again. When I did a video back in December, I said that it did look like we were about to see another increase in price. I just didn't know how much. Fast forward to now and we're seeing some incredible price hikes in a very short amount of time. Usually it's just one game that rises due to someone talking about it or re-release is announced or whatever, but the Xbox 360 is showing some real popularity in the recent months. What used to be an affordable system to collect for is now only for those with deep pockets. Or so it would seem. In this video, I'm trying something different for Retronomics. I'm going to go over some prices and stats like I usually do, but I'm also going to show you the top 25 games that increased the most and decreased the most over the past five months. Uh, it's technically five and a half because I'm writing this in June, but we'll see if there's any other reason for prices increasing rather than just the store closing in July and determine if the prices will continue to rise or if we can expect a drop. But before I do that, here's how Retronomics works. I get all of my prices from PriceCharting.com and they are accurate as of June 17, 2024. I took every listing that Price Charting has on the Xbox 360, which includes everything from a Turtle Beach headset to a super rare collector's edition. Then I made sure that there was an entry for every month since 2020. Any entry that was missing even one month was excluded from my account. The prices that I charted are for CIB and for the North American region. I know that some people get a little touchy about price charting, but I'm looking at the trends here, not what things actually cost, so keep that in mind. Given the criteria that I set, I got 1,744 prices to go over. At the start of 2024, the total for all of those items was $38,951, and as of the end of May, it's $43,698, which is an increase of $4,747, or 12%, in just five months. That's a lot. In fact, that's almost double the increase in 2023 and the highest increase in the past four years. So what's the deal? Well, a lot of it has to do with the anticipated closure of the Xbox 360 digital storefront. While you can get some of these games on the Xbox One and the Series Store, not every game is backwards compatible and there are licensing issues preventing those games from even staying on the store. Combine that with the strong and justified resistance to the digital movement, the FOMO is at critical levels creating instances where a $10 game can go for over $150 seemingly overnight. However, it's not like all games are rising 700% or more. At the start of 2024, the majority of the items listed on my list were under $20 and only 18 were over $200. And as of the end of May, 1,200 were under $20 and 22 were over $200. So you can see that in just five months, 100 items on PriceCharting.com went from being under $20 to the other price brackets. When you look into the price increases, almost 1,100 items increased in price on price charting, with the bulk of them increasing no more than $20 in the past five months. About 50 of them increased between $20 and $50, 20 of them 50 to $100, and only five items increased over $100. When you break it down that way, most of the 360 library is affordable. Even when you consider the majority of what is in PriceCharting.com isn't all games. While writing this video, I took a look at my own collection, which isn't very big, but it's got some really good games. And check it out. The majority of my games are under $10 complete even today, and they're not shovelware. Halo 3, Oblivion, Skyrim, LA Noir, Portal 2, Perfect Dark, oh, maybe not Perfect Dark, but you get my point. If you want great games for the Xbox 360 and you don't want to break the bank, you can still get a lot of games. And if you have an Xbox Series X, a lot of these games are backwards compatible and have a higher resolution mode. 
Of course, price is subjective and I do have some games that are over $20, but if you were to start out collecting Xbox 360 games today, you would still be able to do so on a budget. I took the top 25 games that increased the most and the top 25 that decreased the most. Some on the list are collector's editions and systems, but you do have base games in there too. Here are the top 25 that increased the most dollar wise in the past 5 months. Fallout 3 collector's editions are on this list probably because of the new Fallout series on Amazon. Bethesda always has made cool collector's editions and the new Vegas one is pretty cool too. I also think that it's interesting that Guitar Hero Band Kit increased about 50 bucks. The guitars are now compatible with Fortnite, so that's a bit of a resurgence. F1 2013 was one game that I mentioned in my last video and it's still increasing, $170 in just the past 5 months, which makes it now the most expensive base game for the Xbox 360. When you look at games that increase the most percentage wise it tells a slightly different story. 612 items increase 20% or less and 19 items increase over 200%. While the majority of the items didn't increase more than 20%, you still had almost 500 games increase more than 20% and 57 games doubling in price in the past 5 months. And here are the top 25 that increased the most percentage wise. I do find it funny that the Turtle Beach headset is on this list increasing almost 200%, but the rest are games and don't include collector's editions. Some of the games are on the marketplace and not backwards compatible titles, which could explain why a handful of games with low Metacritic scores are on this list and only increased in the past couple of months. Infernal Hell's Vengeance, for example, was $14 forever, then went up to $140 seemingly overnight, but we're already seeing copies sell for way less. Will it go down further? Well, I think so, given how poorly received this game is. If people think that it is good enough for the price, let me know in the comments below. Now, believe it or not, there were some games that actually dropped in value since the beginning of the year. There wasn't a lot of them, but you can't legally say that all Xbox 360 items increased in price. As of the recording of this video, 568 items from my list dropped in value, and here's the breakdown. The majority of the listings that dropped in value dropped less than $20, and 12 dropped between $20 and $50, and 2 dropped over $100. When you look at the percentage drop, it illustrates that the majority of the items listed dropped less than 20%, if at all, while 80 dropped between 20 and 50% and none dropped 100% or more, which means that the formulas I used worked. When you look at the top 25 items that dropped the most, it paints a better picture. Mostly collector's editions dropped the most. The Dead Space Limited Edition dropped the most, but they're kind of rare and there have only been three sales this year, and when that happens it tends to affect price charting listings a bit more, and it's only about 20% of its value from the start of the year. Speaking of percentage, here are the top 25 games that drop percentage wise and as you can see more limited editions and toys to life but what's really interesting here is the NCAA football games. 2012, 2013, and 2014 have all dropped in value with 14 dropping the most at nearly 50%. This is because we now have a confirmed release date of the new college football game which is releasing July 19th. It doesn't have the NCAA license on the box, but players, official stadiums, and official teams, and chants are in there, so I don't think that people will care that it doesn't say NCAA on it. Now with that out of the way, what's the future of Xbox 360 prices? Well, I think that we'll see some of these bad games drop off because we're already seeing it. Infernal has dropped significantly since its peak and it could drop a lot more but it's too early to tell since the spike just happened a couple of months ago and the store hasn't closed down just yet. When the PlayStation 3 store was announced to close prices spiked and then when they reversed it prices dropped considerably. But the 3DS and Wii U stores did close down and prices did rise but now they're more or less stabilized because the rush to get the whole set has diminished. 
that'll be an interesting video to revisit in the future. So that's going to do it for this episode of Retronomics. Did you spend a lot of money collecting or did you cash out? Let me know in the comments below and make sure that you liked the video. And if you're new here and haven't somehow subscribed yet, do so as I plan on making more of these videos in the future. You can follow me on social media at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Nick and I'll see you next time.